Hello, Mr. Adams here. Going to be going over some uh, math problems with you, just uh, some review and so on. First, I'm going to take care of a little bit of perimeter uh, review. I may come back and do a whole other perimeter area geometry type review for you. Uh, I see them on the homework that there's, there's some of you are having question marks there. Or you're not doing it. Uh, so we're going to be covering some of that. Also, I'm going to go over lesson 105, your homework for tonight. This is Thursday. We're going to be going over that so that you can be ready to get that done and see how it's done, have any questions and so on. I'm going to help you with that. All right, not going to do them for you, but I'm going to show you. All right, so let's take a look first. Lesson 103, numbers 7 and 8 had to do with perimeter of a rectangle and perimeter of a square. All right, so we have a rectangle. We're going to say it's 9 by 12, all right? What is the formula for the perimeter? Perimeter equals 2L plus 2W. Why? Because the opposite sides are the same. This is 9 and this is going to be 12, correct? That's the way a rectangle works. We got right angles here in each one of these, all right? So these lines are perpendicular to each other. So we're going to have opposite sides being the same length with a rectangle. That's part of the definition of a rectangle. So we're going to say 2 times the length plus 2 times the width. The length, 2 of those. The width, 2 of those. So you fill in the numbers, all right? Remember that no sign between a letter and a number always means multiplication. You're going to take 2 times the length, which is 2 times 12, plus... 2 times 9, which is the width. You're going to multiply that. You're going to get 24 plus 18. Remember that you do your multiplication before your addition and subtraction. Now you're going to add those up, and you're going to get what? You're going to get 42. 42 is the perimeter. Perimeter equals 42. And in this case, we'll say it's inches. All right? They were inches. So it's 42 inches inches, right? or you could label it inches that way as well. Right? Either one I will accept. Right? Now, remember, the perimeter means distance around it. So if you forget the formula, just add the four sides together. Oh, looks like you may not be seeing all of it. Let me do that. Okay, now we're crooked. There we go. So, you got a little bit of glare there as well. 12, 12, 9, 9, 2L plus 2W, 2 times 12, 2 times 9, 24, 18, add them together. There's your perimeter. Distance around it. If you forget the formula, just add the four sides together. Let's take a look at a square. And again, perimeter is just the distance around it. So if it all fails, if you, you just add the four sides together. But let's take a look at a square. Say it's 6 and 6. Well, if those are 6, then this is 6, and this is 6 on a square because they're all the same. They're all 6 inches. The formula, since all four sides are the same, the formula for the perimeter of a square is P equals 4 times the side, or 4S. All right, that means... 4 times the side. And in this case, that means 4 times 6 because you have that. Again, it makes sense, right? If you say 6 plus 6 plus 6 plus 6, that's the same as saying 4 times 6. That is what we're doing here. So you have 24 inches for the perimeter of that square. Now, I'm going to be coming back and doing another video of just area and perimeter. We're going to cover area and so on. We're going to look at parallelograms, which were a little bit different. But a parallelogram, the formula for the perimeter of a parallelogram is the same as the perimeter of a rectangle. They're both the same. They're different with area, but they're both the same for perimeter, for the distance around them. You're just adding the sides together. Or with a parallelogram, 2 times L plus 2 times W. All right. 
Let's take a look real quick at Lesson 105, Lesson 105, which is your homework. And we're seeing there, uh, number one, you're going to draw a line segment five and a quarter inches. You're going to take your ruler out and you're going to draw a line five and a quarter inches on your paper. And you're going to put a point on each, one, each end, right? Because a segment has an end point on each end, right? Then it says you want to put a point somewhere. It says to put a point in the middle of that. You have to figure out where the middle is. If it's five and a quarter inches, half of that would be the middle. All right. So you got to take five and a quarter, divide it by two. Okay. Now, uh, number two, I'm going to help you with that one quickly. Write the time that is one sixth hour later than 555. So you got 555, right? It says PM, but it doesn't make any difference with AM or PM. So 555. And it says, what's 10 minutes later than, or yeah, 10, I gave you, gave you some answers there. What is a sixth of an hour later than that? So we're going to take a sixth of an hour, one sixth times 60, right? Because there's 60 minutes in an hour. So I'm going to take one sixth times 60 over one. If you multiply that out, you get 60 over six. And what is that? 10, correct? Understand one sixth, anytime you have one over your denominator, one is the numerator, and you're multiplying by something, you actually end up dividing by your new denominator. What did I do here? I ended up dividing 60 by six. That's what you do if you have one as your numerator. But you can go ahead and fill it out the way you know. Now this is 10 minutes. I got a short cord here, so I can't reach out real far. 10 minutes. You have 10 minutes there, it tells you is one sixth of an hour. All right, so if you're supposed to be somewhere at 555 and you were one sixth of an hour late, that means you were 10 minutes late, what time did you show up? What is 10 minutes later than 555? You gotta figure that out. Uh, number Three, you have to simplify those, which means reduce the fraction. What number goes into both? What's the biggest number that goes into both of those equally? Divide it out. Make sure it, its lowest terms is what you're doing. Some of those are improper fractions. Improper fractions is a number like this, where your numerator is bigger than your denominator, and you have to divide denominator into numerator to figure out what the mixed number will be. So it means eight divided in, or three divided into eight. Eight divided by three. That goes twice, six, two left over. You make your remainder a fraction, okay? Make your remainder a fraction, two thirds, two over three, two and two thirds, all right? Now, that's what you do on those problems if the denominator, or excuse me, if the numerator is bigger than the denominator. The top number is bigger than the bottom number. You have to divide it out, make a remainder a fraction. Otherwise, you're just reducing, all right? Uh, number four, you gotta figure out what the pattern is there. From 137 to 143 to 149 to 155, what's the next number? See what the pattern is, right? Uh, number five, find the number of hours in the month of January. Well, there's 24 hours a day. Figure out how many days are in January and multiply. Pretty simple, all right? Uh, find the percent of increase, number six. Percent of increase uh, from 50 hours to 60 hours. Percent of increase, hmm, what was that? What did we do for percent of increase? Percent of increase is subtract and divide by the original number. Subtract and divide by the original number. So here, I'm going to subtract, I'm going to get 10. I'm going to divide by the original number, which is 50. So 10 divided by 50. Oh, but that's, you know, how can you, you know, decimal point, two zeros. You want, you're looking for the percent. So you have to get a decimal answer and then change that decimal. Say, for instance, your, your answer is 0.32. All right then you got to change that to a percent by moving the decimal place two places to the right. 
So subtract, divide by the original number, move your decimal place two places to the right, there's your percent. Right? Um, let's see. Number seven is a Roman numeral. You don't have to do that. We're not, we don't mess with the Roman numerals. We're spending our time on other things, right? right? And number eight, solve using the rule S equals D over T, right? That speed equals distance over time. S equals D over T. Speed, miles per hour, equals distance over time, all right? So, it says here that that distance is 155 miles. Miles is distance. So this is a train traveled 155 miles in two and a half hours. How fast was it going? All right. So distance is, again, 155 miles. The speed or the time, excuse me, the time, 2.5 hours. Miles, distance, miles, time, hours. All right. I divide this into this, time into distance, I'm going to get speed. I'm going to get miles per hour. So that's what you do. You divide that out. You're dividing by a decimal. Divided by 2.5. You got to move the decimal place once here. You got to move it once there. Put your decimal place there and divide. Oh, it's a division problem, Mr. Adams. I don't think I'll do it. Yes, you will. All right. If I see you don't do it because it's a division problem, I may take off double points. Remember that? You guys hate to divide, so you just don't do it. Not going to work. Pull up the big boy pants and do the work. All right? Very good. Catch you later. We'll do another video later on. Bye.